Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Just waking up for a little bit of a late morning with a gallon of coffee. It's already down, so I'm ready to go. As always, wish you the best of the best over here from Helsinki, Finland. And let's get into live scene right here, right now. Wasting no more time. I left you off yesterday night when we were in the midst of creating this daily dildo right over here. Since then, we've actually made new lows. So just seeing more continuation. But really, the big news was the break of, uh, what was it, 3510 a couple days ago. And that was the impetus for really, you know, the shorts being taken and this action starting to have some fall through. Uh, moving averages, all major moving averages on the higher time frames are certainly bearish. You see the 10 simple starting to get more and more divergence away from that 21 exponential. Both are sloped to the downside. Definitely not good things. And just as an aside, if and when Bitcoin does start to go into a little bit of a stoppage, whether it consolidates or maybe even reverses, I want to see these guys get some convergence on each other rather than divergence, just as an aside. But of course, right here, right now, you know, talking about trades in this range is, you know, it's it's all hindsight. Just kind of go over what we were looking at and the impetus for taking a lot of positions in this range was basically, yes, these major moving averages being you know, held, uh, holding all of price action, even the lowest period, the 10 simple, that red one. And then also, of course, the RSI over here, which is which which does give you good insight into what price action is doing. It's like a line chart, but it tells you a little bit more. And the fact that it was stonewalled from getting out of the bearish control zone right over here and also being held by the exponential, which was, you know, right at the edge of the bearish control zone as well, was a pretty damn big tell, in my opinion. So, you know, looking at these sorts of things and putting the pieces together, it does feel like this baby has a little bit more juice to go. But uh, as I've been stating for a while, I do want to be cautious. Um, if, it, if Bitcoin does take a little bit of a nosedive here, I am not necessarily fully uh, fully convinced and uh, sorry, not, not fully convinced or, or it's not that I'm not fully convinced. It's just I want to take the more conservative route, not believing that Bitcoin is just going to shoot down from this area right here and to make new lows immediately. I, I feel like that is the more retailer thing to think of, of, of what's more likely to happen. Can it happen? Certainly. And I'm actually going to present a case that shows that that's likely to happen. But I do believe that at least in my trading experience in the way that I do things, I want to be more conservative and I'll and, and I will be closing shorts uh, at the high 32 3200 range, maybe even low 3300 range. Um, as far as that goes, ADX, DMI, DMX, whatever the fuck, he's out of jail and he's ready to come back and he's signaling a rough ride beginning for these bulls, these bulls bungholes right over here. As we, as you can see, the ADX getting above the signal line and also the DMI mine is certainly dominant. Of course, this is not spelled doom when Bitcoin is in a consolidation area phase like you did have over here. You got plenty of signals. However, the last signal was, well, that was a break of 6,000. So, you know, it's one of those things. Looks like it just got filled. Nice. Okay, getting filled right over here. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, pulling in some of my position. And uh, yeah, I had a, had a scalp going on from about 3380 and I'm starting to starting to do a little bit uh, bring some of that in as I don't want to have full I don't want to have a scout position on I just want to have my I just want to have my main short on from 6300 right over here so that's essentially what I'm looking at and uh, Bitcoin yeah, again, just slumping down. Um, as long as we are below the which which resistances we need to go to the to to the four hour as long as we are below essentially this guy right over here which you will notice is basically just kind of, you know, a little bit of a swing high. As long as we're below this area right over here, I, I, I'm i happy to be overall short. Now, you can make, obviously, a nice little block, a nice little, uh, a, a nice little, well, zone, so to speak, which is really the way, which is really the right way to be actually, uh, to actually be relating um, support and resistance. And, you know, as long as you're below this area right over here, I uh, don't really have any reason to be, to be thinking that this run is done just yet. Now, the lower time frames are signaling a little bit of exhaustion. Um, but I do want to go back on over here before we get into those lower time frames on the daily. You know, daily Stokes uh, did just have a cr uh, fresh cross down, not even able to get out of the bearish control zone or, or I mean anywhere near it, actually. Uh, so pretty heavy pressure downwards. Um, we we talked about the RSI. We talked about the DMI ADX. What about the Jewel? Yeah, Jewel is, man, Jewel, <laughs> Jewel is at a decision point. If, if we do take down a little bit more today and close the day down around 3350 it's probably gonna it's probably gonna signal another sell in fact funnily enough or perhaps not funnily enough for the uh, bullish bungholes out there looking at the 12 hour uh jewel over here which again is my favorite indicator it's perhaps the most powerful indicator i've ever used i don't even like saying that but it's 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 weird but it's true um but actually if, if bitcoin if bitcoin ends this next 12 hour dildo here or lower uh that'll technically be a sell now of course i always state that whenever whenever i get a sell in this zone or lower i don't like it but 
it would be it would be on the same side as basically saying you know we do have enough juice to get down to about uh you know 3300 3250 whatever it might be just the prior lows essentially uh 12 hour obviously dmi ads getting way up there as well uh highest we've been uh highest we've been in quite some time but still you know consolidation can get can get high this is your consolidation around 6000 this was your break of 6000 so really it's not until the dmi minus gets really far up there where where it's time to be talking about like major major dumps but uh we are you know looking at the ad in confluence with this you know it, it is getting it is getting pretty damn strong so so it's just it's it's on the radar i don't i don't see it as a full and complete signal in and of itself uh, it's not like the jewel but it is you know it, it is like a secondary type confirmation anyways 12 hour right over here to me this looks like you know this looks like it wants to break down uh 12 hour stokes uh having a fresh cross down i believe it was two days ago right over here stopped right out of getting out of the bearish control zone so that's you know giving us insight into what the bots and algos are doing saying hey keep on the bearish pressure essentially which you know fucking obviously when we're when we're looking at the higher time frames everything being held held low uh, in an overall, you know, in an overall very corrective formation to begin with, uh, this guy over here, keep in mind that the volume characteristics on this are just that very lovely orderly drop off in volume, which to me is, uh, is in confluence with the, with the overall structure, very corrective, meaning, well, typically more of the same, likely to be resolved to the downside. And, uh, whoops, there we go. Did I just get filled on that? Nice. Okay, good. All right. Locking some of that in. Cause I don't want too many, uh, too much deltas right now. I want to be a little bit less exposed, uh, on my scalp, but on my main short from six, 300, I'm completely happy to, to, to leave that uncovered, you know, until we actually put in a little bit of an uptrend, perhaps that'd be good. Um, but Hey, uh, right over here. Okay. So Bitcoin, while I do believe that the higher time frames, while they while they are signaling that we have a little bit of juice to go uh, further down, uh, I don't want to be like what I think most people are thinking right now and thinking that this thing is just going to shoot straight on down to 2,900 or 2,600 or, or whatever it might be from this area. Now, I do believe that Bitcoin does break down over time. I strongly believe that Bitcoin breaks down over time, but that critical component being time. So looking at this right here, uh, this consolidation is actually nearing a decision point. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually very obviously, uh, nearing a decision point. You see, you know, once, once this volume just completely dies off, that's typically when these sorts of formations get resolved. And so the fact that we are, you know, really brushing up against this and it's not like an exact trend line or anything like that. But if, you know, if, if you see something that just is, is head and shoulders above this area right over here, that's likely going to be a major inflection. So if it comes on the breakage of perhaps a major support at 3250 down around here, or if it perhaps comes on some sort of a reversal ish type dildo, well, then we can actually gain some something off it. Obviously, we don't we not have that just yet, but it's something to consider, um, you know, looking out for the rest of the day. Now, I do want to go back and, uh, and and let's just talk a little bit more about these lower time frames. Again, this lower support down around here, uh, 3250, that's the big one to watch as long as we're living above there and closing like daily dildos above there especially and especially you know higher time frames than that uh, you know like a weekly uh, I, I don't want to be too damn bearish and, and I really can't stress this enough you're going to see a lot of people get extremely bearish I mean they already are right now looking you know talking about 2000s and 1000s once again uh, but if and when Bitcoin does get down to this level 3250 I, I I like I said before I want to be conservative I want to be closing my positions in fact you're seeing me well you're seeing me close a, a scalp right now but I'll close I won't close my 6300 short I will basically just go neutral back on it by buying some perps against it um, um, so that's essentially what I'm thinking right now. And, uh, you know, looking at the lower time frames, we are starting to, you know, they it's do we have enough juice to really just stonewall or, or just bulldoze through this area right over here? Probably not. You know, going to like a four hour, which we just closed about an hour ago. Um, you know, uh, four hour stokes are, are crossed up, are pointed up, uh, four hour RSI is not giving you any sort of bullish divergence. People are going to call this bullish divergence between this area and this area. Well, it's not because first things first, we don't have a, we don't have a confirmed local low right over here. We just, I mean, this, this is continuation. And then what we're working on right now is consolidation is what it looks like to me until I actually put in something that, that resembles a local low, then maybe we can, maybe we can call something, uh, uh, bearish or sorry, bullish divergence. But for right now it is not, doesn't mean that it can't turn into, but we need to see more proof not 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 fucking promises uh by bull hopium dreams being destroyed by bearish bungholes or sorry bearish dildos jesus christ man terrible slip of tongue right there but hey <laughs> you know what i'm talking about um yeah ov ov overall dmi adx giving you you know um will be printing a little bit of divergence on this guy as well um 
but uh, but still telling you that the trend is quite strong. So, you know, it, it, I, I think that another stab lower is certainly within question. It's a que- it's the the real question is what happens after that, uh, and I, I think probably bounce from there. To, uh, this is your eight hour. Eight hour just finished as well. You know, same time as a four hour. So it's the highest time frame that ended the soonest. And as you can see right here, you know, eight hour still 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 crossed down, still headed down there. Um, eight hour DMX ADI still you know still still going strong actually. And uh, same and RSI over here will have no bearish divergence at all. I mean, it's making lower lows on the RSI. Can't be had during that. And uh, eight hour, eight hour jewel telling you, telling you exactly when to fucking short. Literally right over here. God damn, this, <laughs> this, this fucking indicator is just. Never mind. Okay, so let's go over. Let's go over and check out the two day. I did we did we end another two day last night? Yeah, I believe we did. I believe that we did close this two day last night. Uh, we are on the 29th. Yep. Okay. Yes. So this is a fresh two day. Let's see how the oscillators reacted on this last close. Uh, two day Stokes still headed down. Still headed down. And uh, while crosses on this one do typically matter, especially with my settings, uh, it you know until you actually get the cross, you can't really fucking play it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up in the pile of wrecked traders. Two day DMI ADX giving you a fresh uh, sell signal as well. The last time that we actually had a sell signal was again the break of. 6,000, but you know, until it really starts getting above this like 30 area right over here on the signal, uh, sorry, on the ADX, it's you know, th this was consolidation. You got plenty of false signals right over here. Again, not my favorite, you know, not my favorite way of doing things, but also the RSI. Whoops, let's get on over here. Come on, baby, show me the money. There you go. So remember when we talked about the hidden bearish divergence on the RSI from here to here on price action here to here in the context of a downtrend? Well, we're actually finally starting to get down towards that lower end of the bearish control zone. So slowly but surely, but really fucking slowly getting there. Uh, and this this would suggest that we do have, you know, we, we do have some room to uh, to play this guy out. Um, overall, you know, below the exponential deep into the bearish control zone, it's, you know, it's fucking bear market and <laughs> likely to get on lower. Jewel doesn't really have, Jewel isn't really telling you anything right over here. Um, I mean, it basically gave you the sell signal. What was it like? Way over, <laughs> way over here at at thirty seven thirty. Yeah, about thirty seven hundred almost. So again, uh, not really too much book on that on that guy. It's more hindsight right now because it's not really not the the. Is it, I mean, it can't really tell you anything right now. Uh, three days, three o three day over here. We will be sending one. I think later. To, nope, not tonight. Uh, two days. So it'll be literally the end of the month, which we will be getting a new monthly pretty damn soon. So we need to look at that. But three day Stokes again gave you the fresh cross down right over here. The last time we actually even had a cross on this guy was a break of 6,000. Uh, this thing, this one very, very rarely fakes out. I mean, this was a major dump over here early August from 8,000 to, to 6,000. This was a major dump over here from 10,000 to 6,000. I mean, th these are pretty damn crazy moves. Um, so keep that in mind. And uh, and yes, it is still, you know, gaining momentum to, to the downside, as you can see, and uh, rejected from getting out of the neutral zone. Still hev uh, under heavy bearish control below all major moving averages using that 377 blue over here as uh, as resistance for, for our our lower tops or sorry lower highs uh, being guided in this um in this more aggressive downtrend 21 even crossing the downside of that not uh, not that that's like a huge deal or anything like that but uh just telling, just getting another lower period below a higher period never a good sign never a good fucking sign we do have the 100 below the 200 right over here as of uh, well i guess that was early january so too late to call on that one but overall all of the major moving averages are well below the breakdown area of 6000 so as long as bitcoin is below 6000 i you know from a more traditional standpoint don't really have any reason to believe that the bear market's over and in fact, I mean, you know, there's, there's going to be indications beforehand before Bitcoin gets back above that area. But just in the most, you know, general sense, as long as Bitcoin's below there, this is there's there's you know very little reason to believe that the bear market's over now like i said there's going to be indications beforehand one of the big ones for me um that that i'd be making decisions off of is the weekly 200 exponential move average right over here if bitcoin can both open and close a weekly dildo above this guy at 4150 ish area it's actually a little bit lower than that now on stamp um if it can open and close a weekly dildo above that i would actually take some longs off that uh just myself but you know, you can see that the 10 simple on the weekly is governing price action. We had a bearish engulfing dildo right over here. Consolidation, consolidation, and continuation now. So uh, this, again, saying, you know, we actually do have some juice to uh, juice and momentum to go to the downside. Uh, we do have our weekly stokes over here having a fresh cross down, not even able to get out of the critical zone. That's, you know, that's likely to happen when you are in a very intense trend, which we certainly are. And uh, weekly RSI, you know, popped back up, test the exponential, and just immediately <laughs> nosedives right after that. Uh, ADXDM. 
BMI. Actually, the ADX is strengthening right now, funnily enough, or perhaps not funnily enough. But uh, just just for reference, this is the only time that, or sorry, this is the second time in history that Bitcoin's uh, DMI minus has even really even got this high. Uh, this was 2015, right over here, 2014, 2015. Obviously, I don't have the information to go back to 2010, 2011. We'd have to go to the BLX index, but I don't really want to go to that chart right now. But you, it's probably around that high as well. Um, so keep that one in mind. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, when when I'm talking about when, uh, when I'm talking about this low of like 3250, I don't want to get too damn bearish if, if and when Bitcoin gets around there, because looking at, you know, my jewel right over here, it's very rarely does it stay this low for long. So, you know, this current low right over here actually just tapping down beautifully on the actual, you know, 3100 low in uh, middle, late December. Um, and really, it's it's actually only even gone down there once in history before, right over here again in 2014. So looking at this guy, you know, yes, I do believe that Bitcoin goes lower, but on this current drive that we're looking at, you know, does it have the momentum and juice to break 3250? I would say, looking at these sorts of things, I would I I would be more I would be more cautious. I would say that it's it's less likely, but I will like I said I will show some things that also do suggest the otherwise or, or the other case. But uh, but but my personal opinion is that it does not. Um, and let's actually just let's just evaluate this case a little bit further. So going back onto the lower time frames over here on our GDAX chart, and do we have I put in any horizontals? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so we have this breakdown right over here, and we have. Well, I guess that's really all that we need. Well, remember this this symmetrical triangle that that Bitcoin put in over the course of about two and a half weeks in late December, early January. That is still very much in play. I mean, we have basically just been following this guy out and down ever since then. Um, and that measure move is pointing all the way. Oh my God, where to this next horizontal? Right at the prior low, right around thirty-two fifty. In fact, if we do put on a beautiful, uh, a beautiful, <laughs> it's not beautiful. It's fucking Fibonacci retracement. If we put on a fib right over here. You could see you could see also that the 886 is uh, is down around this area right as well, and Bitcoin actually does have uh, have a history of playing out the 886. It seems to like it. In fact, it's resting on. Well, it's actually a little bit higher, isn't it? I got that wrong. Um, it's actually resting on the 786 right now, and that's that's that look that appears to have picked it up so far. Um, but uh, but hey, if that area fails, and where do I look to? The 886 down around here. So yeah, you know, uh, if Bitcoin does, you know, try to uh, try to consolidate here and, and move a little bit upwards, I'm looking at this block right over here to 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 provide the resistance. As long as Bitcoin's essentially living below there, you know, I'm pretty um, I'm pretty damn bearish uh, in, in the more immediate terms. Looking for more continuation, which I actually do think is, is probably more likely to happen. I think that this is just consolidation right here, getting ready for a move lower. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, overall, just very ugly price action. Just this rolling over rolling hills. We are almost uh, fully confirmed on the nice hell row pattern, the H of death or the H of distribution. Or as Mr. Hagen Reese says, oh, we have a hell row kitty pattern. We do not go moon. We go floor. <laughs> and that's, well... Typically, what the H does, it's just basically a pattern of distribution. So, overall, um, uh, very ugly price action. Nothing's changed from a higher time frame perspective. Like I said, if we just extend this upper resistance trend line of that uh, symmetrical triangle over and out, uh, what are we what are we essentially making right now? Well, we're essentially making what what appears to be a descending triangle. Um, descending triangle, you know, more likely to be resolved to the downside. That is what Bitcoin basically broke at the 6,000 level right over here to lead us into this area right over here. So Bitcoin does have a history of playing it. And uh, in my experience, just triangles are, you know, triangles typically have a good, you know, a good workaround of playing. I don't, I can't say the same about most patterns. In fact, I hate trading most patterns, but triangles and uh, channels I think are okay. Um, so yeah, let me just get this out of the way. Now I'm just moving it all the way around. Um, but overall, you know, this guy does have a mesh move, the, the, the descending triangle right over here, which would be pointing all the way down towards, if we can do this properly. And actually I forgot to do some in the lower time frames first, but but hey, it would be pointing down towards around, you know, 30, uh, 2400, 2500-ish area down around here. So I do have my eyes on that area. It does line up with a lot of other things that I'm looking at over here on our bitstamp chart. You know, if you've been tuning this content, you already know, uh, but essentially this, uh, uh, this 2300 to 2600 is also marked by the 886 Fibonacci retracement. Remember, you know, kind of coming into play once again, which actually did bottom this bitch out in uh, 2014, right over here. Just a nice stab down on this capitulation wick. Uh, we also have some nice historical horizontal trend lines, probably best seen on on a daily dollar time timeframe. And then we also have some massive uh, high high value nodes on the volume profile right over here. Although the highest value nodes, as you can see, way down around here, doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to get down around there, but just you know, kind of like a secondary thing to kind of consider. Uh, blue 377 exponential coming in right 
right around that 2600 level as well and remember the monthly the monthly actually does have some indications that that area is is an area of interest the cyan 89 exponential coming in right around here and we are deathly close to breaking the green 55 exponential moving average right over there so to me this is you know this does not look good and this this is now where it starts to get into the other it, it, on the other hand of arguing that perhaps this thing actually does break down like in the next few days um all the way into the mid 2000s so uh, I'll, I'll start to lay out this argument i you know damn i again i do am i positioning myself for this no i'm not but i will i will only enter in and 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 really take this under my own um as position wise if bitcoin breaks below 8250 on like a daily uh but for now you know, you look at this guy right over here. We are about two days away from ending the monthly, putting a new monthly dildo in place. And what 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 people were looking at as a um, as a reversal ish dildo right over here, which you know it was never it was never going to be that. It was never you know it never had reversal type volume. It never even had you know never had continuation. Never even had volume on the continuation, which didn't you know is non-existent to begin with. So people calling that is just it's very very silly. Not to mention that Bitcoin v bottoming out of this area is just unlikely. It's just incredibly unlikely. Um, and hey, what's up, uh, Bitmex? bitmex.01 to 1 btc challenge pleasure to meet you man <laughs> i've actually done well i've actually i actually have not done that or was it 0 0.01 or was it 0 0.1 i've done point not point not four two or four or five or something like that it was like it was like 350 400 bucks when bitcoin was around ten thousand dollars and uh, and i turned that into about 10 10 bitcoins on this account it's all documented here on video um but <laughs> but to be very very clear i don't want to make that sound better than it is because people i think people get the idea that like i was just scalping my way through it which yes i did scalp here and there which there's videos on that in the live trade section but what i mainly did was get some pretty lucky trades i caught i caught a short down from about ten thousand. i mean i mean like you know it was really like low nine thousand to about seven thousand and then i caught another short i caught this short from about eight thousand down to six thousand and then i caught this short right over here so i believe all that is shown on video and overall you know it's those big trades were what made the account it's not it wasn't like scalping and stuff like that that was just fun to do for you know a youtube video here and there but as far as like actual realistic trading and there we go just uh i guess one of my alerts just went off um it, you know that's that's not really how it was done so i don't want to misrepresent that it is really my point anyways monthly right over here when i look at this it it really does look like it wants to shoot down. Uh, the fact that that the high of this monthly so far was just complete rejection of even getting anywhere near the high of the prior, in fact, stopped about $150 below, uh, is is concerning to say the least, and does suggest that there's more downwards price act, uh, pressure on price action. Uh, monthly stokes way down around here. I mean, they are not really loosening up on their um, on, on their grip. We have monthly RSI getting into the bearish control zone. This is actually the deepest that they've ever been in Bitcoin's in Bitcoin's literal you know history. Uh, so this is the most intense downwards market. I mean, you probably didn't need me, need me to tell you that, but uh, but there but that is quite interesting that we do have you know the higher time frame suggesting well this probably happens sooner rather than later. So my personal opinion is that this probably takes you know a couple of months to actually play out. Uh, but but going off the monthly right over here, I I mean. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, it, it does look like that. It really does look like that to be, to be very, very clear. Um, going back to the four hour right over here, you know, that is all certainly much, very much in play as long as we are below, you know, this 3,500 level and especially this, you know, 3,800 level right over here. Um, but on the lower time frames, you know, just kind of round out some other discussions. Uh, we did put in a nice little bear flag right over here, this consolidation, which, have we played out the measure move on that? Let's actually let's actually see where this measure move points down around towards, and let's see, does it match up with anything else? And uh, come on, yeah, there it is, right around there, right right, right around you know 3280, 3290. So we do have a lot of things pointing around this lower area right over here, but I don't really have too many things going below that just yet so you know does bitcoin have the juice to actually break it i, I think that there's more things pointing towards it not it, it, it happening later on most likely like you know probably months away remember this ascending triangle uh it does have an apex quite far out i mean the apex is all the way over here or if I, in fact i haven't even done it out but the apex is technically i believe in like april or something like that yeah let's do this right yeah yeah in early april doesn't mean that bitcoin's going to take all the way to get around there um it can certainly happen much sooner than that in fact when these things get about 69 percent full it's burst time or typically burst time and then it just gets you know more and more and more and more and more likely for those blue balls to explode uh as it gets filled out more and more but 
as you can see right now, we're about 50%, perhaps, maybe a little bit more than 50%, but it, you know, it can take its time is my point. Let's go over to CMEs, because again, CMEs have been the easier chart to read, in my opinion. And uh, if I can load them up, that'd be better. Come on, trading view. There you go. Good trading view, kid. All right, so 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 CMEs hit the hit the measure move off this ascending triangle that we have been looking at for about a month, uh, right over here, perfectly all the way to the 786, which is where we have spot Bitcoin basically resting upon right right here, right now. And, uh, and well, it does, uh, um, uh, does it try to rally it back up around here? I mean, it looks, it actually looked kind of like it, uh, like it, like it wants to give it a little bit of a try. Uh, should be resistance right around here, uh, right around this 3360-ish area. Um, and then below there, you know, if this 786 does fail, which at some point uh, I do believe is likely, then yeah, you know, again, down around here, the measure move off this symmetrical triangle pointing around to about the same area uh, that we just looked at on spot down around, you know, 3200-ish area, actually a little bit lower because there is a discount on futures. Um, let's go check out GBDC. Now, GBDC to, uh, G GBDC, on the other hand, is more in line with the idea that Bitcoin breaks down sooner rather than later because this bear flag, even with the most lenient way of charting it, um, looks like it's broken. We do have breakout volume right over here. We do have a full breakdown below the support trend line. We even have a gap down. Um, and usually you get, you, you'll, you'll get a gap down on like an actual, you know, if you get a gap down below a major support or resistance or, or above a major resistance, typically that is an inflection point. Not always, sometimes you get a trap, but looking at the volume and looking at the, looking at the prolonged reaction off of it, I would say it's more, uh, it's more likely to go with the, uh, with the former assumption, uh, volume over here, you know, again, very indicative of this being a, a rising channel bear flag. And I believe that we have seen confirmation on it breaking to the downside. Uh, we haven't, we obviously have not broken below this, uh, $3 and 85 cent region right over here, which would line up with Bitcoin's prior load around 3,200 ish area. But if that were to happen, um, you know, the, this bear flag does have a measure move pointing us all the way down to about uh, two dollars and fifty five cents. So with that in mind, you know, with I mean, really with this in mind, uh, this would be on the same, you know, on the same scale as a monthly saying is likely to break down sooner rather than later. Unless we just have something, you know, completely new form around here. Maybe this turns into a bear trap. I you know, is it possible that that happens? It's possible. Certainly the volume on this is on a daily is like not too impressive. It's, it's, it's not, it's not super impressive, but it's, you know, it, this does not look good. It, it just does not look good. You got your daily stoke still headed down, just getting into the critical zone right now. Uh, ADI DMX giving you a fresh short signal as well. Again, the last time we actually had a short signal was right over here. This was basically your break of 6,000 on spot. I, uh, looks like it wants down to me. Um, Jewel gave you a fresh sell. Oh, oh my God. Beautifully right over here. Gotta love that, man. Gotta fucking love that. But, um, you know, that's, that's essentially representing the other side that, that this happens sooner rather than later. Again, I, I'm going to be more conservative myself no matter what, but if Bitcoin does break below 3250 or sorry, yeah, 3250 on a daily, uh, I, that's, that's, that's what the, that's what the magical charts will tell me. So, Again, uh, have to be flexible. Again, technical analysis is not a perfect thing. It's just, it's, it's certainly not perfect at all. In fact, it only tells you when you're wrong, <laughs> but that's perhaps the most important thing to do. Uh, let's go check out the longs and shorts. The longs are actually rising right now. We have gained about 2,000 longs. Yeah, almost 2,000 longs in the last uh, day, um, all the way from about t low 28,000 to almost uh, 30,000 right now, which again is concerning. People putting on longs is uh, at this area is, I mean, around 30,000. You do not want above 30,000 longs when Bitcoin's below 4,000. I mean, shit, even below when Bitcoin's below like 3,800, below that major resistance. It's just too many people on the same bus um and that you know that 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 really offers up the opportunity to trap a shit ton of people on the other hand shorts are rising as well no doubt about that shorts are are rapidly rising gaining about five thousand shorts um in the last uh, week or so and we are we are right around twenty six thousand open shorts at the current moment in time which Remember, anytime that shorts get, you know, down into the low 20,000s, it does match up with major dumps in Bitcoin's history. So are we seeing the beginning of this, you know, starting to split back up? Uh, could be. I mean, could be. Again, I don't put, too, I, I, yes, these do matter. You know, Finex margin short, margin positions do matter. But it's still just one exchange. It's still, you know, very incomplete pieces of price action. Um, uh, sorry, not it's not even price action. Very incomplete pieces of information. Um, 
so price action first but this is you know it, it is quite interesting and historically speaking it the, the these are typically major dumps now do i think that you can do elliott waves and fucking harmonics and you know fucking like you look at your rs you got you got bullish divergence on the shorts chart baby we're going lower or or anything like that no i don't believe that you can do that in fact i think it's incredibly misleading when people insinuate that um uh, or I mean, it's probably just naive. They probably just don't know. Uh, you do want you always want to you always want to assume the best of people, right? Um, but historically speaking, yes, this does match up with major dumps. Uh, each and every one of these critical points. This was your dump of six or sorry eight um, eight thousand to six thousand. This was your dump of like literally the the break of six thousand right over here. And once again, get into the zone. Um, you know, and, and then over here, even much lower, much more critical zones, just because Bitcoin costed, cost a shit ton more. So you didn't have to put it on as many coins to have the same sort of uh, exposure um, to the downside. So, yeah, uh, interesting. Let's go check out the long, the, the shorts or sorry, the rates that they're paying. Shorts are still shorts are able to put on these positions for no interest rate. And this has been the case for like the last month. Uh, very bizarre. You would think that the that the rate to borrow in a bearish market would be significantly higher. But in fact, we've only seen the longs rate go up. Uh, not not point not three percent about right now, which is, you know, it's certainly not low, but it's also not super high either. It's not really. It's not until it gets about double that where it starts to be concerned, where you're paying like you know five thousand, ten thousand dollars a day to hold a million dollars in in position size down. Um, but it is very very bizarre that we literally have seen just about like people like you can people are begging you to go short right now. It's it's crazy. Uh, a, a three and a half thousand of those hedge, so we really have about twenty two and a half thousand open shorts versus twenty nine and a half thousand open longs. You know, it's 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 a severe imbalance when you are well below any resistance. Uh, this really does offer up the chance to trap a shit ton of people. Um, so yeah, definitely something to definitely something to consider. Now let's get on over to Mr. Buterol. Mr. Buterol also just like the CME is an easier chart to read. And uh, descending triangle right over here, very nasty uh, four four hour deal to death cross right over here. Reject, 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 and down as we break the lower support of this of this descending triangle. Also six one eight Fibonacci retracement, and we have fulfilled the full on or have we filled the full on measure move? I mean, this is close enough to me, really. Uh, yeah, it's like I mean, it's like a buck off. That's that's fucking close enough, man. Um, so, so yeah, you know, Mr. Buterol kind of, kind of same thing as Bitcoin suggesting that we probably, probably try to do a little bit of sideways here, but, uh, overall very, 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 very bearish, especially as long as you're below one six, sorry, one seventeen, the breakdown area right over there, which correlate that with about 3,500 on spot Bitcoin charts. Um, if you want to make a relation between the two, uh, as long as we're, as long as we're living below those areas, it's like heavy, intense pressure to the downside immediately. Um, if we, if Bitcoin can get back above there and if, and if, and if Mr. Beetle can get back above here, well, then we can actually play out, uh, an extended bounce and maybe, you know, put another lower high or, or maybe even run it a little bit higher, which we can explore as an idea soon. Um, but, uh, for now, you know, direction is down 10 simple on the four hour, you know, just, just, just given, given it the, 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 the slightest love tap and it goes back down. Um, people are looking at this as a head and shoulders. I don't believe that it is. I think that the right shoulder took too long. If it is a head and shoulders, it does have a measure move all the way down to about $69, which is a great number, but I think um, I, I think it's best to simplify and take it one one thing at a time. Now you did get a nice ascending triangle right right over here. You got a beautiful Wyckoff distribution top right over here. I mean, basically you got a markdown redistribution right over here, and then markdown again. And are we going to redistribute in this area right over here? Well, do we put another bearish formation or not? I mean, this one was an obvious uh, descending triangle, so more likely to be a result to the downside. And I'd imagine that this one, you know, probably does the same thing. Uh, four hour Stokes uh, pointed up, so hey, you know, something saying it's it's like that we do put in some sideways here. Four hour RSI giving you. Some bullish divergence on this baby as well getting back above the critical region uh i do put i do put weight on that as well um and and the jewel just getting really fucking down this is not this is not a buy signal or anything like that but it's also like <laughs> It's just difficult to keep it in this range for for too long it's it doesn't doesn't typically stay down there for too long um but that also doesn't mean that it moves up. You know that that, that the the also it can move up while price action is essentially flat or or even in some cases down, uh, with the way that I have that situated. So, again, uh, Mr. Buterol, extremely bearish as long as you're below 117. Uh, yeah, we did hit the measure move off this baby, but uh, likely further down if Bitcoin finds itself at 3250. This this likely you know lines up with the Buterol at around 90 you know 93 94 bucks. If that area breaks, I mean, you know, uh, where do I start looking to for Bitcoin? 23 to 2600. So where do you start looking for on this guy? I mean, I, I guess at that point, I would start looking so towards a 69 mesh move. 
that's, I mean, that's really all I can come up with. Uh, and I do believe that Mr. Butterall probably does get down around there. But again, timing of this, I, I, I want to take the more conservative route. I, I feel like a lot of people are very bearish right now, which, you know, there will be a point in time where everyone's going to be right for a second. Just like, you know, during the bull market of 2017. I mean, it was a bull market for like fucking f f uh, three years, but, but really intense in 2017. Everyone was bullish right over here. Everyone was bullish when Bitcoin was just going like this and everyone was right for just a little bit of time. And then, you know, the basically the basically the buying power just ran out and that's probably what's going to happen to the downside right now i i don't really think that there's like any i i i mean there's probably not any like real bulls left you know like not i'm not talking about retailers you know there's always gonna be retailers who are bullish because well it's fucking cryptocurrencies so we have the bitcoin gang we have all the gangs um but uh as far as like the big boys i i i have a hard time believing that anyone's still you know really bullish in this area um I, th I think it's pretty, uh, I think most people have accepted that this thing is very likely to go lower. So then it just becomes a game of how low are we going to go? Uh, just like the song. And, you know, like I said, when it comes down to, when it comes, when it comes down to talking about major mark cycle bottoms, I, there, there's no real like significant way to do it. You can only mark out areas that are potential. I have this area right over here, 2,300 to 2,600, a lot of things pointing that direction, but that doesn't mean that doesn't guarantee anything. Then if that area fails, I, I have 1869. And then if that area fails and I'll, then I'll join the super bears down around 1000. Um, but anyone who, who's claiming that they know that they have the secret sauce, they have the secrets, you know, source of where the fucking overall low is, is incredibly uh, misleading in my opinion it's very 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 naive and shows a lack of actual experience because how do actual market cycle bottoms be put in well it's basically just a bigger account who wants to accumulate as much as possible as their perspective so understand their perspective how do they do that well they don't do it where everyone's fucking looking at so so, so I, I heard someone say that it can't be 1869 because i don't like that number no it's be, no they, they said can't be 1869 because look at this if you only have one little support right over here and it can't it can't it's not gonna work it's like, that's not, no, I don't believe that you understand how it works because that actually makes a lot of sense, at least to me. Um, so I, I think one or two, one of two things is going to happen is uh, we're either going to get front ran off of this area right over here because a lot, you know, most people are kind of have, are coming, are coming to the consensus that 1000 is going to happen or this, or, or this area gets absolutely obliterated and Bitcoin comes down to like, you know, 500, 600, 700, puts in a quick wick over there and then rallies back up pretty damn significantly. What happens? I, you know, again, I don't know. We need to see the reaction first. And that is my big point about this is that people who claim to know this and, and, and claim that they can you know you know even see the even see a capitulation bottom like in the making in, in its own right is wrong it's 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 wrong you don't know until until the event actually happens you need to see the reaction so just like this area right over here which we based off of which you know was a t was temp technically a potential reversal area it's not until we saw the reaction after a week or two i mean really really in the, in the span of a couple of days um that it was very obvious that it was that this was not going to be the actual low um but still you know bounces get played out and we go through consolidation and now you know starting to roll over once again um so yeah uh have i talked enough on this video have i bored you enough already with my silly silly talk well maybe not enough just yet i think that we can go talk about mr ripples over here mr ripples finally getting down to that low 28 cent level you know i've been speaking about this for about a couple months and you know now it just finally happens it's it's one of you know it's it's, it's a great it's it's a great experience for the people who have been tuning in this, into this content who might be a little bit newer and then you just you know you see something way in advance and then you know just it takes it takes time and that's what a lot of trading is it's a lot of waiting it's a lot of fucking waiting more often than not there's not even a trade to be made but but it actually has touched down on this support right over here uh 28 a little bit a little bit above 28 cents um not you know or sorry yeah a little bit above 28 cents still very bearish but uh, as long as you are below 34 and a half cents you know i would be looking for this to actually break down a little bit lower uh three day stoke still headed down still got room to go uh three day three day rsi same sort of thing over here i mean you know i'm just <laughs> basically basically just playing it playing it out baby um if this 28 cent region you know the more important thing to talk about is this is if this 28 cent region breaks right over here then we can start talking about like mid to high teens um because that you know th this is not a, this is not a pretty chart right now uh it needs to hold 28 cents if it the second that it breaks 28 cents is it's it's bad it's very bad um you know you can maybe make the argument for it right now i'd say that's a it's a weak argument the the bearish argument is more strong especially when you know everything trying kind of trades together and you have you know its brother stellar over here just completely breaking down and making new lows this is you know this is essentially what <laughs> what i feel like we're going to see you know on other assets but uh you know stellar 
dollar relatively hanging at high, but e even this thing, which you know has been relatively strong, it's this is still a terrible god awful chart. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, you have your bull trap right over here, break your consolidation right over here, retest it right over here, death cross right over here, and now we've broken to new lows right over here. I mean, it's kind of. You know, I've, I've been speaking about going to six and a half cents for quite some time. Uh, people are really bullish on this guy right over here. And I'm not saying this, you know, in an arrogant way to say, you know, I'm fucking right. They're fucking wrong. No, it's just I don't like this is one of those things where you have to understand where where do people come up with this thing? Where do people come up with this is bullish? There is no there, there's nothing bullish about this at, at all whatsoever. Um and again, this is one of the you know one of the better overall charts. It does stand out because it doesn't it hasn't, it hasn't dumped all the way back down from where it started from, but uh, very likely going lower. I mean, it's already in the process. That three-day dollar death cross right over here, the impetus for just you know slope, blah 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 blah. Bloop, 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 you know, down. <laughs> so again, not good. Uh, weekly right over here. Weekly is just, you know, more continuation. In fact, I forgot to check out the weekly on um, CMEs. Uh, yeah, weekly on CMEs, just more continuation as well. That's all it looks like to me. In fact, let's do some. Let's do something else. Let's actually uh, let's let's look at the good old inverted Hagen rechart and how do, what do we see over here? Yeah, looks like it wants to reach its prior high. In fact, it looks incredibly fucking bullish right over there uh daily right over here yeah looks like it wants to i mean you know looking looking at your prior high to, uh, around negative 3200 pretty damn good um does it get above there is a real question you know that's that's a real question that i'm kind of mulling over right now uh but yeah you do have a lot of <laughs> a lot of very bullish things right right now um and remember you know when you get into like the last kind of phase of the blow off where this blow off top that we had in 2017 or you know if, or if it's going to be basically a capitulation the other you know the opposite but equal type thing well, it's it's kind of the same sort of mentality. It's just it gets it gets crazy. It gets fucking crazy. So, again, um, if and when capitulation actually does happen, I don't care to trade it. I'm just gonna be sitting back and watching it because uh, again, it's pe people who think that you can get in during that time is, you know, I'm, I'm gonna guess that you probably haven't traded that before. Uh, it likely can't be done um again really only one person is going to be able to buy the low and then all, all the fish are going to jump on and then it's going to be like an extended period of sideways most likely and there's no real rush in my opinion there's no real rush um so yeah you know i understand that that that, that people have different you know different per, uh perspectives and different you know wants and needs when when it comes to trading that are different than my own 100 percent uh, just sharing mine just sharing mine that's all um but yeah uh, this chart right over here, you know, just got that nice rolling over hills, just lower highs, lower lows. I mean, lower highs and lower lows. It's it's all it's been. Don't understand why people are calling this an inverted quasi moto. It ain't. <laughs> it fucking ain't. Uh, so yeah. Um, do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about this area? I mean, no, we don't. We don't really have to. Yeah, we don't really have to round out why this is not going to be the low right now. Um, but uh, if if you're interested in the case on why I believe that this is, that this is not the low and, and an extended look onto where this is likely to go as what well, you know with with much more deeper examples and then and then also a long term analysis on where I think it can go you know in the future which I am bullish in the future just not like you know you got to call it spade a spade not right now. Um, and when I say future, this can take a long fucking time, uh, just like you saw with gold and silver, which are still actually doing their own thing. In fact, let's just go over there right now. Um, but definitely, to, sorry, uh, to finish my sentence, go over to the playlist titled Long Term Analysis, and you, and there will be an hour long video in there uploaded on Sunday, every Sunday, by the way, um, on, you know, on, on, on basically all that and more. But here's gold, you know, very similar, right? Very, 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 very like, let's actually bring up silver because silver, silver has a lot of uh, carryover to Bitcoin because like Bitcoin gets compared to gold, whereas like, you know, silver gets compared to uh to compared to gold right um but it's like what the fuck is this beanie baby over here it's well <laughs> this is the next bitcoin baby uh you know it's a uh, parabolic blow off top uh nice consolidation around this region then breaks down descending triangle right over here breaks that get, got, guy down another descending triangle i mean you can almost see the same sort of a chart in it almost but my point is is that this you know is taking its time you're looking at about 10 years of history right over here uh from its parabolic top in 2011 to where it is right now in uh, 2018 sorry 2019 um 
you know, this thing, while, while, while I think lower time frames want to rally a bit, maybe even, maybe even reach 17 bucks, uh, or maybe, or, or even $18, a little bit over $18. I do not believe that the low is, is in on this guy either. Uh, this is, you know, this is pretty, uh, Pretty nasty chart, pretty fucking nasty chart. But my point is, is that things can take a long time. The beauty with Bitcoin is that it actually does give you these mark cycles in a relatively expedited way. But as Bitcoin gets more and more mature, like a silver, like a gold, it's gonna take longer and longer. So how long does this next market cycle take? No idea. But I just wanna, I just wanna offer up the perspective that this can, you know, quite literally take i mean not just years but like decades uh, and i don't want to scare people i don't think that i don't think that bitcoin's market cycle takes a decade but you know understand that capitulation can come a couple different ways you can get the you can get the way that that everyone's you know familiar with on just uh, on an extremely violent wick down like this you know nice nice basically 50 percent move in the span of a few days uh that 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 usually scares people pretty damn well but if that doesn't work, what's the next way of making people capitulate? Well, boring them to death, boring them to death to cause the same emotion. Remember, it's all about human emotions, human psychology, which is what creates these market cycles and why you see that a lot of these similarities between these different assets in time. Uh, I mean, we just saw with gold and silver right there, uh, but it's, you know, I've seen it in, in everything that I've traded, whether it's commodities, you know, Forex, Magic, Internet money, and also, you know, where I come from as a, as a market maker in equity options, you see a lot of these things because we're, we're always dealing with humans. So it's about create it's about creating that, that that emotion of despair and hopelessness and what you know what's one way of doing that well again just an extremely down like an extremely aggressive down like this or or the more dubious way in my opinion is to just go sideways for like five to ten years that'll do it as well in fact you're kind of seeing that being done in silver right now so yeah uh, overall, Bitcoin uh, still doing more of the same. Lower time frames are well. I'm just having. <laughs> we're just seeing more continuations since we spoke last night. I think we. I think I left you off last night when we were right around here. Yeah, 34, 10 ish area. Um, but uh, but yeah, to wrap up the lower time frames before I sign off. Uh, overall. Bitcoin hanging on to the 786 right now. So you know a lot of bots are going to be buying this area. A lot of algos are going to be buying this area. Just like the 618 right over here, it got, you know, got past like uh, three times hitting the 236 and the 382 and then the 0.5 on the way down. Uh, but each and every one got sold, creating those lower highs. Well, now we like to we, we like to get to play off the 786 for a while. But the question is, how high do we get before it actually, you know, if, if it is going to break down before it actually does break down? Now, if Bitcoin gets back above the 618, I would actually reconsider a lot of things that I'm saying right now and say that in the more immediate time frames, Bitcoin is likely to rally back up, um, you know, even to maybe like 3800 and take a take a stab at this uh, resistance trend line, you know, maybe even Bitcoin breaks this guy to the upside and, and you make a little bit of a higher high on, on, on a daily possible. But that's also why I'm using the weekly 200 exponential to both, you know, and I need to see both open and close above that area to, to kind of change my my overall views until that happens. Just more of the same to me. Um, and we actually do have an instance of that happening in 2014. In fact, a very, 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 very similar instance, which I'll just quickly cover right. Oh, Jesus Christ. I told myself I wouldn't do this. But basically this area right over here, very similar to this area right over here. Definitely go check out the long term analysis playlist if you want. Uh, for the full explanation, but volume is similar, the percentage drawdown is similar, the percentage uh, boost up is similar, and then also the MBT signal, signal, which is completely external, giving you a very similar signal as well. Just trust me for it. If you if you want the if you want the actual visual representation, go over to that playlist. Uh, long term analysis, it's all in there, all documented. But basically, in this same sort of a thing, uh, Bitcoin actually did take a little bit of a higher high right here uh, in comparison on dildo bodies and on wicks too, uh, before rolling over. Um, and this this whole area took about well, uh, each and every one of these is a week, so one month, two months, yeah, about two and a half months. Uh, we've been doing this right now for about one month, two months, oh, about two and a half months as well. Uh, timing doesn't need to be exactly necessary, but or, or exactly the same. But uh, I don't know. Are we are we rolling over right now? Maybe. Um, <laughs> so yeah, again, I guess actually that would go in the that would go in the pile of this could break down sooner rather than later. Anyway, sorry, I keep on getting I keep on getting distracted by myself. That's my own fault. I do apologize about that. But let's get on over to here. Yeah, uh, again, you know, uh, basing off the seven eight six. Yes, we do have things pointing lower, 3,300 to 3,250-ish area. Uh, I'm going to be a buyer right around there, not to go long, but to just get even, just get back to neutral on my on my own positions. Um, by the same token, I am certainly more immediately bearish, looking for more downside, as long as we are definitely below 3,400 and closing two-hour dildos below there. But from a more higher time frame perspective, 3,500 right over here, the, the area that we basically consulted around and then broke down through. If Bitcoin got back above there, then we might have one of those scenarios where we actually, you know, try to put in a little bit of a higher high. Uh, but for now, uh, for now, you know, it looks like consolidation. Uh, lower time frames a little bit tired, so so likely to do a little bit of sideways here. Um, but higher time frames still got some juice to go. So that's that's what that's 
essentially what I'll be doing. I'll be back on later tonight with some uh, live stream action. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure to speak with you on this lovely Tuesday morning. A very cold, very snowy Tuesday morning as well. So I hope that you're staying warm. Hope that you're having a great Safu and fun day. And uh, and I look forward to see, to, uh, to seeing you guys soon. Take care.